Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. We are now happy to be joined by via Skype by Booger McFarlane of the SEC Network, one of my favorite people in the sports media. Booger, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. Doing well, man. Doing good. I didn't. I forgot to wear a coat. I was so excited to talk to you. Now, uh, Booger Cats got pounded against Mississippi State, an embarrassing performance. A lot of the folks around the program are kind of saying, "Look, this happens. You know, it was it was a throwaway game." It happens occasionally. Do you buy that? Well, yeah, Matt. Sometimes things like that do happen. I think when you look at Kentucky, where they are as a program right now, um, I, I think they're a program that's trying to figure out just kind of where they should be. You know, some programs come into the season saying, you know what, we're a national championship contending program. Some programs come in saying, you know what, we're a seven, eight win program. I think Kentucky is trying to figure out where they want to be. But as far as the game you're talking about, yeah, you go on the road. It's noisy. The other team gets momentum. I understand it. I've been there before. It happens. The key will be how Kentucky bounces back. Can they get the running game back going? More importantly, can the defense line up and be physical? That was the most alarming thing. You know, if you look at the numbers and you look at the statistics, Kentucky was a pretty good run defense. However, it didn't translate on the field against Mississippi State. I want to see can they get back to playing tough, hard-nosed, physical defense. Can Josh Allen get the group motivated? Can they get ready to go? Yeah, I mean, that that was the most striking part was how much that Kentucky just kind of got manhandled. The other thing people here are focusing on is Kentucky has allowed 13 touchdowns in the last four years in the last minute of the first half. And you go back to the Florida game where two wide receivers didn't get covered. Do you think there's an organizational issue with Mark Stoops and his staff, or is that just something that just happens? No, well, first of all, it doesn't just happen. I, I think it's about the details. You, you know, you wonder why things like that don't happen at Alabama or they're not happening at Ohio State. It's because of the details. And, and I think uh, Coach Stoops and his staff would be the first to admit that somehow the communication wasn't there. Somehow they didn't get their players lined up and they should take responsibility for it. But here's what I also say. Mark Stoops has grown this program to where it is now. And much like I alluded to at the beginning of the interview, Kentucky has to understand something. And I want to be very, very honest. From a football standpoint, this is not basketball. From a football standpoint, Kentucky is not a national championship winning program, okay? They have to understand where they are. From a football standpoint, I think Kentucky strives to be eight, nine, every now and then catch uh, lightning in a bottle and win 10 games. I think they have to understand where they are. Right now, they're five and two. They have five games left, all of which are winnable, I think, except the Georgia game. So I think Mark Stoops will be the first to tell you uh, he's done a very uh, good job there. I think the, the boosters there should realize he's done a very good job. Is the program where it needs to be? Yeah, it's, it's never going to be at Alabama's level or maybe at LSU's level. It's never going to be there because that's just the nature of Kentucky. Now, he will also tell you he needs to do a better job in certain situations. But I think overall, I will give Mark Stoops a passing grade at Kentucky. Uh, from where he started to where he is now. And let's see how he finishes, because we've seen Kentucky start well and start great early on and not finish. Let's give him an opportunity to finish this season out, because if he finishes winning four out of five, I think everybody around there will be happy with nine and three. Don't you, Matt? I do, too. And then let me ask you, that's a great question about expectations. What should people expect, not just this year, but in general, at Kentucky? What is the sort of, for lack of a better term, peak that you can have at Kentucky football? I mean, I, I mean, I, I think it's nine or ten wins. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I, I think if, if you get to a year where Kentucky wins ten and goes to a big-time bowl game, I think everybody in Big Blue Nation, including John Calipari, should just shout from the rafters, man, because that'll be a great year. I think you have to understand that. And, and you know, the hardest part for a fan base is to understand what our ceiling is and accept it because everybody wants to be Alabama. Everybody wants to be Ohio State, and quite frankly, Everybody can't be that. There are programs in the SEC, and let's just play this game. Let's go down the list of programs that are national championship programs in the SEC. Alabama, I think Georgia is, Florida, Tennessee used to be. I'm not sure where they are right now, although the fan base think they are. LSU, Auburn. And that's it. Texas A&M, I mean, Texas A&M maybe with the, with the amount of money they're spending. Other than that, I mean, Matt, I think that's about it. Everyone no. else has to realize that they have to get in where it's eight, nine, and if you have a great year, you win 10 games. No, I, I'm totally with you on that, and I've made that argument before. Let's fast forward to Tennessee real quick. Butch Jones, if Kentucky beats him, is he fired? And secondly, should Kentucky beat him? Well, I think Kentucky should win the game. Tennessee's a dumpster fire right now. I, I think everyone knows that. 
I think Butch is eventually going to get fired, Matt. I don't know if the AD Curie is ready to do it right now during the season. Uh, for whatever reason, that may not be his uh, his style. I, I do think that Butch Jones is going to be fired. And once again, the expectations that Tennessee has doesn't match what Butch Jones is doing. Butch Jones is good for eight or nine wins a year. Like he's doing a phenomenal job recruiting, getting Tennessee to eight or nine wins a year. However, the natives are tired of waiting on the brick by brick in the champions life because they think they are a championship winning program. But that's not going to happen there anymore, is it, Booger? I mean, I don't think that's it. I think those days for Tennessee, like at Nebraska, I think they're over, don't you? Well, I see, to me, Tennessee still has a window. Not, I, I agree with you on Nebraska. Nebraska's window is closed. I still think Tennessee has a window where they can do that, but they got to capitalize and got to get back to it. Just look at the recruiting, Matt. I mean, they had a top uh, ranked recruiting class last year. They got a top 10 class this year, uh, depending on what happens with Butch Jones. So the recruiting tells you what your window is. And right now, Tennessee's recruiting very, very good. They got the number one player in the country by some services, Trey Smith, last year. So they're getting good players. The key, can they get those good players to maximize their efforts on the field? And that's why we come back to Butch Jones, because Butch Jones just hasn't gotten that done. All right, Booger McFar on the SEC Network. Always great, always makes time for us. Thank you very much. Anytime, Matt. Anytime, buddy. Where's your jacket at, by the way? I thought I, this was going to be like See why you got to give me a hard time. I was trying to be like you.